All right, so here's what I'm thinking this morning. So I was watching uh, my buddy David Bond, his uh, YouTube channel, he's got great uh, two-stroke content, is um, Auto Beta 2T. So check him out. Um, but anyway, he was doing, he's doing some contest uh, with a little Kawasaki 50cc and they're trying to run it 100 miles an hour or something. I don't know, it's a European thing or an English thing. I have no idea. Outside of my deal. But he was doing um, port molds. And so I thought, you know what? On the Road Race RD400, I ought to do the same thing. See, so I've got a scanner for the shop because we're doing kind of way more intricate uh, convoluted surfaces now and I needed uh, the scanner for that so I thought we ought to do a port mold of the 400 turn it into a solid model and then I can get volumes and manipulate the shape so the next time we do some CNC porting we can pull this off just thinking it's a it's a good baseline so uh, I ordered this silicone off of Amazon, which arrived today. I don't know how they do that, but you know, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna try it. Now, I don't have any idea. Dave used uh, that pourable, kind of waxy stuff that you reuse and stuff. Um, and I'll have to order some, but I thought I would try this first. So I think I'm gonna try to wax, because I don't know if this, this'll stick. Oh, we should go over. I'll bet uh, Mike Chapman's got some of that mold, that port mold stuff. Uh, he may not be at the shop. We'll, we'll plow on ahead with this, but then we, we may try something else later. So anyway, I'm going to wax the ports. Uh, we're going to try that out, and then I'll mix this up and pour it in. And let's see what we see. Let's see what we come up with. So I put a little mold release in there too. I don't know what this is going to take. Let's try that. My guess is this is going to take a little while to set up anyway. Okay, precision pouring here. What do you think? I think we need more of this. Oh yeah, close enough for this program. Okay, we need a stir. Let's get a stir on, on this program.
Uh, three par or funnel? Ah, yeah, three par, of course. Woo! There we go. Oh, yeah. There's plenty. Uh, obviously mixed too much. So that's too much. Um, I'm not prepared with the other side, so we're just going to go with this. What else can we pour some silicone in? You know, if this was a regular machine shop, uh, of course I would fill somebody's, you know, toolbox, you know, glue their shit down. You know, silicone breaks away, but you know, it'd piss them off. I have only myself to piss off here. And I do that just fine without really doing mean shit. So, all right, uh, let's, um, I'm gonna get, go make parts and um, we'll let this sit. It's kind of bubbling, which is a good sign. I'm hoping the bubbles come out, not that it's really all that important, but um, a, a better finish would give a better scan. So it's, so the scan thing um, is way more difficult than what you think it is. You think, oh, you just scan something, you put it in, you know, Fusion or whatever software, you know, CAM software you're using, and you just, it spits out machine code and you, you machine it. You know, it doesn't work that way. So it turns into, I think what they call a point cloud. Now the point cloud is the wrong way, so you have to convert it into going the right way so the software recognizes it. And I've been using MeshLab, which is free, and seems to work okay. Of course, I don't know anything different. And then you have to change it into a solid model, or a polygon, I think they call it, which is the little triangle thing. Um, so it's a surface, but it's little triangles, which of course your CAM software still doesn't read. So you have to simplify it and convert it and change it into something else and continue and you go through this whole process and this whole list of steps to get it to come out as a mesh file. I don't even, maybe a mesh is the same as a polygon? I don't know. You know, this is not my world. So anyway, then you put it in to, I use Fusion 360, so I put it into Fusion, I have to scale it, I have to orient it in the right place, and then usually it comes off as, you know, with goofy, you know, bubbles and streaks and stuff, and you kind of have to go in and cut all of that stuff out, trim it all up, and then basically you just use that mesh as a template to draw a solid model that you can then pull surfaces and you know cut lines and stuff for the machine code. So it's seriously a process. And you know, you want a billion dollar idea. If you're a software developer that understand anything that I just said, you need to make a bit of software that does an easy conversion. Um, now I understand that there's CAM software that will read mesh files um, because I did, we did a saddle, a, a horse saddle um, and I found a guy that would cut foam and he said that he found software that his machine will read. I'm not going to buy any more software, I, I, at least not at this point, but there's got to be it, an intermediate step that would make this simple. So I'm asking somebody out there come up with this software. It's, I mean, every 3D printer, my, it would be my guess, is going to need this. You know, it would make this conversion from scanning from all of these weird surfaces that now seem to be the calling into a, a, a way simpler step. But that's, that's the process we have as it is. All right, I'll be back once this thing sets up. All right, I got one out. Still a little sticky. 
Uh, it just takes some kind of aggressive. I don't want to be too aggressive and ruin it. I think I need to get that other remeltable stuff. But maybe we can get this out. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. It's a breach. The breach. You ever deliver a baby? Yeah. I did. All right. Look at that. Man, that's a restriction, huh? God, is it really that bad? Okay. So I'm thinking that the scanner isn't going to pick this stuff up. All right, hold on. Let me get uh, the laptop and stuff, and let's see if... Because I'm thinking we might need to paint it. I don't know. Let's see. Be back shortly. All right. So, you know, it's not a great picture. Can you see this? Let's try it. I think it needs some color. I don't know if we can get any paint to stick to. Silicon. It's not working very well. Okay, let's try something else. Maybe we try, let's try dark. All right, so, uh, paint does stick to silicon. So, there we go. You know what I see, though, is this is a really poorly shaped port. I mean, I'm assuming that this little gap is not there because it doesn't look like it when I look down it. But this is horrible. So a, a good thing to do, I think, this whole... Uh... All right, let's try that right there. Hold our drop box. Okay. As okay, turn you off. Close you. Okay. So that is now kind of a file, except for it's got a bunch of crap over here um let's do let's we want to point cloud simplification let's go a hundred thou point okay and then we need to pull that up again remix if we scale this Zero three eight. Okay, then let's see where we are again. Okay, cool. So we're at size now. Now here's the, the 
part that's kind of a pain in the ass. Now, you basically just use this mesh and you redraw it, which just seems like it's kind of a pain in the ass. Why can't you use any of this stuff? So, if we do a mesh, and I think we can pick up, we need objects now. I gotta turn this camera off and I'm gonna play with this and once I get it all set up, then I'll bring you back in and we'll, I'll show you what we're gonna do with it.